The book titled this Using Distance and Cost Formulas, but I want you to call it a Uniform Rate Formula instead of a Distance Formula. I'll explain that in a second. If you've missed any of the previous videos for Lesson 19, they're linked in the description, along with some extremely helpful videos from Algebra 1. There's even some from 6th grade and Algebra 2. A formula is an equation that shows the relationship between two or more quantities, and each formula solves a specific type of problem. If we want to find area, well, we do length times width. We learned that, right? If we wanted to find some simple interest, we do the principal times the rate times the time. That's I equals PRT. And that specific formula finds the interest. This specific formula finds the area. See? And right before you take the GED math test, they'll give you a page of formulas to use to solve some of the problems. So they're not going to expect you to have them memorized, but you need to be familiar with these formulas and how and when to use them. So it'll say area equals A equals LW on the sheet, but you need to know when to use it, right? So for uniform rate, which is also known as motion problems, the formula to calculate distance, rate, and time is D equals RT. We can also say D equals TR. Because we're multiplying these two together, it doesn't matter which order we put them in. 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2, isn't it? So it's distance equals the rate times the time. We substitute known amounts into the formula and solve for the unknown variable. Now you can watch Algebra 1, video 8.5, that talks about this uniform rate motion problem, okay? A car drove an average speed of 65 miles per hour for two hours. What distance did it travel? Now I made this extremely simple so that you can see in your head what's going on, okay? On the test, it might be a little more difficult, but I, I tried to keep this as simple as possible so you could follow the method that we're using. So the distance that they traveled is equal to the 65 miles per hour speed times the two hours. See? What we do is we multiply the 65 times 2, and we know that the distance is 130 miles. We solve for D. If it said a car drove 180 miles in three hours, how fast did it go? Well, we could say 180 is the distance, that's the D, and the 3 is our time, and the R is the rate of speed, and we need to solve it for R. See that? If we write 180 equals 3R, because remember, it doesn't matter what order we put them in when we're multiplying them on that side of the equal sign. If we put 180 equals 3R, well, we know from our algebraic equations that we can divide both sides of this equation by that 3, turn it into a giant 1, because it's got the same numerator and denominator. So we only have an R on this side, but on this side we have 180 divided by 3, which tells us that this R is equal to 60. Now we don't call this the distance formula, because the distance formula finds the distance, distance between two points on a coordinate plane. And we'll get into that in Lesson 22E, but for right now, just call this uniform rate or motion or distance rate time formula, okay? You don't want to confuse it with the distance between two points. We can solve for any of the missing variables. We just put in the amounts that are known and solve for the one that we don't know. So distance equals rate times time. We could also say rate equals distance divided by time, or time equals distance divided by rate. Now how did I switch those all around like that? It's pretty easy when you think about it algebraically. If we have distance equals rate times time, and we divide both sides by that t, that turns that into a giant 1 with the same numerator and denominator, doesn't it? And it cancels it out, so it's just an r on this side. It's 1r. So now we've got r equals d divided by t. See? Just like we had the 180 divided by 3, we divide both sides by 3. That makes that a 1. We just have an r equals 60, see? When we divide both sides by the t, the t becomes a unit rate of 1. And the left side becomes distance divided by time as d over t. And we can solve for the rate. Now you can watch my Algebra 1 video 3.7. I highly advise you to do that. And we can do this with any formula. We know area equals length times width. 
we could divide both sides of this formula by the width, turn that into a giant 1, so now we just have 1L, but it's area divided by width, see? So the area divided by the width is going to equal the length, see that? We can also divide both sides by the L, by the length, and turn that into a giant 1, so we have 1W on this side, and area divided by length equals width, see that? And this video explains switching these formulas around, and you may need to do it on the test. So it's very important you watch 3.7. Just click on the description, and you'll see the link to Algebra 1 3.7, all right? For total cost, to calculate total cost, we use the formula C equals NR. That's the total cost, that's the C for cost, equals number, that's the N, number of units, times the rate of cost per unit. That's the R, the rate. And we can use this C equals N times R or C equals R times N. The N times R or the R times N is going to give us the same answer, right? 2 times 3 or 3 times 2, it's still 6. So it doesn't matter what order these are in as long as they're both there. So the total cost of a shipment of shirts is $2,160. If each shirt costs $15, how many shirts are in the shipment? You might be able to just say, oh, I know how to do this. You just divide. Exactly. You just divide. You divide the 2160 the total cost, by the rate of cost per unit, the 15. When we divide both sides of this equation by the 15, that turns into a giant 1, so we just have an N here, and we do the division, and we get 144 is equal to N. Now, what if it was the other way around and it said a shipment of 144 shirts, so it gave us the 144, had a total cost of 2160 what is the cost per shirt? So now we're looking for that 15. So now we're doing rate equals cost divided by the number, see? The rate of the cost per shirt equals the total cost divided by the number of units. So the rate is going to be the 2,160 divided by the 144, and that's going to give us 15 because it's cost. We put the dollar sign in front of it. And what if it says, what is the cost of a dozen shirts? What if it gives us this and wants to know the cost of a dozen shirts? Well, then that's not the answer. We still need to multiply that by 12. That's per shirt. So the cost of a dozen shirts would be the 15 times 12 or 180. So be very careful on these word problems. They'll trick you, and you'll think the answer is 15 because you didn't completely read what it was asking. It wants the cost of a dozen shirts. So we solved it just the way we did here, but now we had to multiply that by 12. Okay? You'll probably see in the store on the price labels on the shelves, it'll say cost per unit or cost per ounce or cost per gram or however it's packaged. A 40-ounce can of coffee costs $9. What is the cost per ounce? Well, we just take the $9 and divide it by 40, by the 40 ounces. Comes out to 0.225. That actually means 22 and a half cents per ounce. So what we're doing is C divided by N equals R. The total cost divided by the number of units, the 40 ounces, is going to equal the rate per ounce. See? You could even round that up to 23 cents, right, if you wanted to look at it as money. But it does come out to 22 and a half cents per ounce. You might see problems like this. It'll give you a chart. So here's some movie prices. Adults are $12, children are 8 seniors are 10 And it'll ask you, how much will it cost for two adults, three children, and one senior to go to a movie together? Well, two adults, 2 times 12. Three children, 3 times 8. One senior, 1 times 10. We add them all up together and get $58 for the family to go to the movie. All right? So you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 229. There's going to be a lot of similar problems like the ones we did. Then after that, do that mini test on page 230 through 233. It says to do it within 30 minutes. Try really hard to do it within 30 minutes. If you have an egg timer or a timer on your phone or on a clock, set it so that you can see how many you can answer within 30 minutes. Wouldn't it be amazing if you got them all done in 20 minutes? Well, then that tells you you'd do well on the GED test. Now, it says you can use the calculator for numbers 1 through 13, but then there's no calculator for 14 through 26. Try to do it the way they're saying it, because that's how the test is going to be for real. 
and you want to see how you're going to really do in real life. So try to follow their directions and see how well you do, okay? Our next lesson is going to be all about exponents. It's lesson 20A. We're going to cover a little bit more than what they're covering in the GED book, okay? I'm going to have a link to my Algebra Word Problems playlist and my Math Formulas playlist. This is going to have word problems that involve math formulas. That can be very helpful. This is a very good video, this grade 6, 6.7, but the ones you really should watch are these Algebra 1 videos. You should watch all of these, actually. So if you can pause this and write those down, then go to them and then come back and watch this one again if you need it, or go on to video 20A. Then I'll see you there, okay? Just do whatever you can to help yourself succeed, all right? I'm giving you a gift of all these links and these side videos to help you, all right? I really think you can do this, all right? I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.